So when a product is called Hyperjuice, it has to be good, right? No. Now I test all my cables by measuring charge and data rates, and then I bend them thousands of times using my custom Master Bender 9000, and then I retest everything again to see what changes. I do this because I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. Now spec-wise, Hyper says this cable is rated up to 240 watts for charging, it's, so it's PD 3.1 compliant. The cable itself is incredibly flexible and is really hard to uh, get tangled up, which is one of the selling features of the product. The design of the connector is quite nice. I like the white and then this gray is actually metallic and so the housing itself feels very, very rugged. Hyper claims that their Hyper Juice is one meter long and from my measuring, I got a little extra about the tip of my pinky. I measured it at 1.005 meters. A Little bit of extra length doesn't hurt anybody, right? And when it came to charging performance, I had a heck of a time testing it. It took me four attempts to get the charging information from this product. Out of the four that I test, it did not hit 15 watts. Talk about performance anxiety, yeesh. When it came to voltage drop, it was around 0.6 of a volt and came Cable resistance was better than average at 0.18 ohms. Now when it came to data speeds, despite being 240 watts and PD 3.1 uh, compliant, it only had very slow USB 2 data speeds. The USB-C protocols are such a gong show. Data speeds for the large files was around 27 for write and 30 for read. For my real life mixed file transfer test, it averaged a little lower at 25 megabytes per second for write and a little higher at 31 megabytes <laughs> per second for read. Yeah, make that make, make that make sense, it doesn't. Now when it comes to durability, Hyper claims that you can bend it 25,000 times. Because I'm generous, I put it through 27,500 bends with my Master Bender 9000. And this is what happened after all those bends. This is not a good look, yikes. It's not that bad, it's not that bad, just, just walk it off. Now because I'm a good little reviewer, I went and redid the charge and data speed test. Uh, when it came to charging, it still kind of worked, though the voltage drop was seven and a half volts, which is kind of massive, and the resistance was 1.87 ohms. Again, it took a bunch of tries to get it to connect to my uh, charging brick and my uh, testing rig and after the test this thing was too hot to touch and when it came to uh, data speeds yeah the entire thing was bricked didn't even recognize the hard drive so the question is now do i recommend it as a reviewer I can't even say anything about the price and value because the thing didn't survive its own stated bends out of the 12 plus cables i tested yeah, not too many of them failed, so stay away from these guys. I'm on a mission to figure out what the best USB-C cables are out there. Uh, I'm a reviewer, not an influencer. Uh, if you're planning on getting a USB-C cable, use my links, just don't get this. Don't get this product. <laughs> no one's paying me to make these videos. I'm just in the business of trying to figure out what the best tech is so that we don't give bad companies more of our hard-earned cash. Thanks for watching.